Good day everyone and welcome to Price Action Training School. Today's session is about money management, rules for our pets at Price Action Training School and how we will do it once our live trading starts. And actually this is also how you can do it uh, when you are trading from your home or office or anywhere where you might be. So <clears throat> these uh, money management rules might be a little bit different than what you expect, but I, I'm here to show you how you can trade it. Of course, before we begin, as always, our standard is disclaimer. Explain that CFD and Forex trading are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. So it's not suitable for everyone. This presentation is my personal opinion only, and online educational materials are developed by Admiral Markets Estonia for a global audience. This video is not part of the .co.uk website, but a globalyouse.com website. So today's agenda will be stop losses, equity risk, this is very impo important, proper lot size, Unreal Markets Mini Terminal, and some general tips on live charts. So how we will do this, this is, as I say, maybe a little bit different, but uh, guys, believe me, you know that I always say that there is no holy grail in trading. In fact, if we need to choose what holy grail is, it's actually money management. So, yes, uh, there is no system that is a holy grail, so don't search for systems. Just listen to what I'm here to say and what I'm about to say and follow our webinars, my personal webinar session recaps, and you will definitely see that the real holy grail is actually a proper money management. Yeah, that's correct. So, today, stop losses is our subject. So, let's say what is the advantage of having a stop loss. First of all, we are talking about general stop loss. I'm not talking about technical stops now. Because you will find on, on a lot of different forums, you will find uh, that people are brainstorming and very often quarreling about stop losses, what are the stops, how we use it. The thing is, a lot of traders will tell you, I don't want to use a stop loss. Well, guys, I don't know. I, I, I simply can say that it's impossible for me. At least I, I never do that because there are different types of stop losses. You can go with technical stops, you can go with time stop, you can go with equity stop. So you need to have something that you say, well, I have a stop loss. Some traders definitely think that it's the same when they say that not having a stop loss e e equals to actually margin trade. It's not the same because sooner or later that trader will probably close the trade in a heavy loss. And it's also a form of a stop loss. It's, it's called psych psychological stop. Because when a trader sees that uh, he, her or his account is actually away below the, the line, then the trader might opt to close the trade because of psychological effect. That's called such a psychological stop. So there is no truth, truth in, the, in the claim that traders don't use stop losses. Only a trader who opens a trade and simply lets the trade go without any further ado or without anything to do with that trade anymore, we can say that that trader actually does not use a stop loss. But any trader who is a, at least has, has a small, a little bit of conscious mind will use a stop loss, at least psychological stop. So don't believe when traders tell you don't use stop, it will make your account lower. It's not a fact and it's not true because there are different types of, to of stops. So the primary advantage of using stop is that we are effectively protecting our equity by using a stop loss. Now not using it on leverage trades will end your career in Forex market. It's just a matter of time. Because guys, if you have 100,000 
dollars of euros right or euros it well you can always open one 0 0.1 lot and you don't have to use stop right it's 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 very very small trade or if you have a million dollar account open one full lot and don't use a stop loss but when we are talking about leverage trades you need to use stops because how many times you write about the direction or potential direction of your trade and what happened is that your trade was stopped out simply because you were over over leveraged and you couldn't have stood the impact psychological impact of seeing your trade going even more in a, in a drawdown so a lot of traders simply need to admit huge majority of traders need to admit that if you use it on leverage products such as forex you need to use stop loss and leverage can be our friend but we need to know how to use it properly now stop loss if used properly will give you the definitely peace of mind it also is good because sometimes you might have a disconnection with your platform so the type of stops is actually of stop is actually disconnection proof and if your platform starts to, to malfunction then it can save your day definitely now disadvantage if you trade with a unregulated broker and I doubt that you trade with unregulated broker then broker might be aware of stop loss and there were some examples I, I cannot name them of course but uh, there, there were some examples of brokers hunting their client stops and uh, the, the practice is that uh, any uh, fully regulated broker will not do that such as of course Armour Markets. Armour Markets does not hunt your stop loss. I also think that US regulated brokers are uh, most most of them are very well regulated and it's now at this point it's very unfortunate that we in Europe cannot allow US citizens to trade with us simply because US regulations are are you know they're very strict about their own citizens so maybe there there will be a time when US citizens are allowed to trade with us but at least I can say that also most of US brokers are very well well, well uh, regulated of course uh, having a, a, a license uh, is okay but to be honest guys uh, UK license such as uh, FCA is the strongest license out of all licenses in Europe uh, so a regulated broker should not hunt your stops I mean it doesn't need to if it has a good liquidity or if it uses A books or B books it doesn't need really to use any stops psychological failure when stop loss hits and reverse well that's another disadvantage because many of us probably experienced this at least once <laughs> in their life but I think it's much more than once you know guys what happens when you see a stop loss you have the urge to open a revenge trade right so <laughs> usually when it happens it means a streak of losses for that day because psychological a breakdown when we see that five consecutive trades were in loss will probably make us to make one more trade that will be triple the leverage right and that will definitely that, that that's not trading then that it becomes actually gambling or hope trading or revenge trading call it as you wish but a bottom point is that it will it will do you no good also a proper stop if it's placed in a wrong place or time it's also a bad thing to do because there is no way that you can use always the same stop loss especially if you trade volatile pairs so let me ask you just a question you can open your chart and watch pound yen pound New Zealand and compare it to let's say euro dollar and what would you say when you see that I'm sure that you will see that 30 people stop loss for pound yen 
will not work. Uh, I mean, 30 pips stop loss for euro dollar will not work for pound yen because I, I simply cannot understand how anyone can say and sell a system that gives like 30 pips of a stop loss all the time because ATR for different pairs is always different. ATR of last seven days for pound yen or pound New Zealand or volatile currencies is triple sometimes the range of euro dollar. So we cannot just say 30 pips because it's not normal guys. So usually traders place their stops in a wrong place or time simply because system says let's use 30 pip fixed stop loss. I don't know. I really cannot justify that. As I say, I'm, I'm, I'm very technical in, in my nature. I'm always technical and realistic. So, uh, I mean, guys, really, 30 pips for euro dollar and 30 pips for pound yen or pound Swiss or New Zealand uh, yen or I don't know. Yen is moving with equities. So, when equities start to move, yen will move due to carry trades. So, it's not dollar, guys. For dollar currencies, more or less, you can try to place a stop in between 30 or 40 pips. For yen currencies, especially volatile miners such as pound yen, pound New Zealand, pound Audi, pound Swiss well, you really need to use bigger stops. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because even with 100 pips of, of stop loss, you can place 1% of your equity in risk and I will show you how to do that. Also there are a lot of systems and a lot of material out there that will say okay let's place very small stop losses because we are actually scalping. Well guys you need to know that scalping can be profitable but if you don't know how to scalp properly well definitely your account will suffer we say like, uh, from a death of thousand cuts. Death of thousand cuts means constantly trading with small stop loss that gets hit each time multiple times or multiple times any position is open. So death of thousand cuts is something that a lot of us experienced of course in our training career especially if you if you try to create a system or you trade it with a small stop simply because you are instructed to do so. Well, guys, even on scalp trades, you should watch your equity and uh, trade with, usually with the mix of technical and equity stops. Well, we will cover that. Now, uh, these are methods that we use for our price action trading school. So this is not, guys, the webinar about stop losses. We already had those kind of webinars. This is simply money management in our price action trading school or how price action should be traded. So with technical stop, percentage stop and confluence stop. Those are three ways to play stop loss with price action trading. Uh, so depending on type of trade, we need to determine our stop. So it will not always be technical stop nor it will always be a confluence stop. Very often guys it will be percentage stop right? So think about it. Swing, now technical stops are usually stops that you know everyone, I mean 90% I, th I think 90% of, of, of traders use maybe even more, use those technical stops like swing highs and lows, preview swing high and lows. So you know guys when you open a trade, let's say you want to open a long trade and you see that this low here is holding and the price is going up so you open your trade here. Most of us will probably place stop loss like 5 pips below this candle, right? Usually it goes like that, like 5 pips below this candle. Well, you know, if something starts to be volatile, if uh, there is news or rumor or you see that equities are tanking or spiking, well, usually our stop loss will be hit and then the price will proceed in our direction. Well, it, it happens. Even though that 
if you're correct with stop loss, it happens. Now, what I try to use, usually you probably saw that uh, during my uh, session recap, I, I'm always giving you technical stops, usually, because I'm I think that I'm well versed in, in stop loss, loss placement. But I also say, guys, within the stop loss that I give you, try to use a fixed risk of equity. So if your stop loss is 35 pips, place 1% of equity within 35 pips of a stop loss. So you can do that. You can do that manually. And if you trade this way with equity stops, you should be on, on a safe side of trading. The problem arises when technical stops are actually, okay, uh, when technical stops are actually mixed with a proper equity stop. What it means, translated to Forex language, it means that you're still using 35 pips of a stop loss right? But your equity is not risk or your volume risk is not 1%, but it's actually 5%. So most traders lose when they place over leverage trade within the same stop. So it, I'm telling you guys, it doesn't matter. You can have 100 people for stop loss and place 1% of risk within that 100 pips. I, I'm not sure that you have ever tried this approach, but believe me, that uh, this approach is the best because that is how I, 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 I do my trading. I have the statement that is two years old now, maybe even more, and the account is 50 and more percent in profit. You know, guys, not many traders can give you two year statement. That's the thing I mean, as I say, I'm not the, the smartest nor I'm the best trader out there. Uh, but I simply know what is the truth in Forex market, what is the ultimate truth. And that is money management. My trades are lower risk. Maybe I did, I, I mean, not maybe, but for sure on that account that is higher, a little bit higher account. I, I, I didn't make 150% of profit, but I'm still, after two years, 50% of profit. So it depends, guys, also which kind of account you want to trade. On my low to high build up project, I'm still positive. I'm a little bit lower because I, I need to use a little bit more of a risk. I had like 3,300 uh, 3, euros now. I'm like uh, 92900 uh, or close to 3000 and I started with 350 euros so you see it's, it's still in profit but it goes I mean for the smaller account obviously you need to use high risk so tactical stops are always combination of your equity or should be a a, always a combination of your equity percentage and technical placement. So don't just say I will use 30 people for stop loss. Just say I will use 30 people for stop loss but risking 1% or maybe 1.5% of my equity. Equity stop is simply predetermined percentage of trader's account. So it doesn't, it doesn't take anything into account, not any technical level, technical stop, just an equity stop. So as soon as 1%, let's say, of equity is depleted, your trade will be stopped out. This is what I like to use, really. So if I say that I will use an equity stop of 1% for my trade, I don't need to use a particular stop because usually that 1% is very, very small, and the thing is that you're really trading with a lower risk. So when your 
equity stop is hit, you will only use 1%. So also think about it. It's good for positional and swing traders, but of course you cannot make too many entries with it because obviously you don't want to risk more than 3% per day, right? Or if you are in a low to high build up project or you want to trade a lower account and make it higher, then you need to use like 5%. Sometimes more, I know, but with with normal account that is already built, built or, or you have a, a fixed account size, let's say 50,000 euros or dollars, this is a good way to go. Because it is a form of arbitrary stop loss. That is your own decision, how much equity you will risk per trade. Percentage stop or equity stop is, is the same. Uh, Usually, I use like 2% for intraday trades, but sometimes it can extend to 3% for intraday trades. So it doesn't mean that I will open one single trade with 3% of risk. It means that I might open three different trades with 1% of risk, still risking 3% and being within the risk threshold. 8% for intraweek trades. 15% for monthly trades, 20% for in investments. So it depends. So let's say that a long trade, for example, is entered, it doesn't matter which pair, at 1.250. So 2% of a stop loss would be placed at 1.225. That means 25 points lower than the entry price. Now, types of trades that we usually do are positional trade, that can be trend intraday or intraweek trade, that can be scalp, that can be also a scalp swing, it can be a breakout, arrow, and also it can be a counter trend trade. So those are types of trades we do with our price action trading school. Positional trades are can be intraday or intraweek. Those intraweek trades are called swing trades. And usually those kind of trades intraday and intraweek are most common. And when we do live trading after we finish with price action trading school, of course guys, we will do intraweek setups. We will be waiting uh, that will be similar to session recap. But I will be trying actually to place the trade that can be entered during live session. So it doesn't depend on me, of course, because I will have one hour to show you potential trade opportunities and explain why I want to place a trade there. So we will see how it will go, of course. But we will be using these principles. Scout trades. I mean, scalp trades are very hard to to stream live because scalping you need to be focused, and you know it's it's very very uh, aggressive. Scalp swings are actually form of intraday trades in between scalps and and uh, intraday trades, and they are made by moving your stop loss by entering a profit stop. Then breakout trades can also be traded. Breakouts can be good. For example, if you traded New Zealand dollar today, I told you guys that I hope that you watch my analysis of New Zealand dollar. And uh, well, it, it was re very respected because after ISM manufacturing uh, data, actually uh, New Zealand dollar went down as I predicted. So breakout trades are also one of the forms that can be traded live. And of course, counter trend trade opportunities can be also traded live with price action trade school and those are the types of trades that uh, we are going to use and that you should of course use. Now positional trades are using technical and equity stop. So if I say that my stop loss is 50 pips, I will try to incorporate let's say 1% of risk into this technical and equity stop combination. 
So let's say that I trade with 10,000 euro account and that my stop loss is let's say 50 pips. So I will use a very small size because I want to risk only $100 with 50 pips. So let's say on average trade position will be 0 0.2 lots on $10,000 account with 50 pips stop. That is how I do most often guys. And that is what I have learned that usually saves my day. Because as I say, if you want to search for a holy grail, then search no more because I am explaining you money management that is holy grail. And other holy grail does not exist guys. Switching systems, switching methods, going from a trade from one trading room to another trading room because uh, some traders trade differently will not make any you will not make anything out of it this is the core of trading success using technicals and equity stops having predetermined risk trading with a lower risk with a proper money management usually it's 0.5% to 1.5 percent per trade and if you make maximum two trades per day that is normal for positional trades of course one trade can be made during London session second trade can be made can be made during uh, New York London overlap or maybe two trades can be made during London New York overlap so you know three percent maximum risk is the risk that we use for positional trades we don't go more than 3% of maximum risk per day. For scalp trades, we need to use technical stops. Maximum 5 trades per day, 0.5 to 1% per trade is risk. 5% uh, maximum risk per day. Well, why 5? Because guys, as soon as you cross 5% of risk threshold, your account is in danger zone. Of course, if you, if you use extremely low accounts, like $100 $200 and you don't care for that amount of money because you want to make three, five, ten thousand out of 200 then you can allow yourself a lot higher risk. But if you don't have a lot of money to deposit and you're really, uh, you know, it's all you have, then don't cross ever, ever 5% if you're scalping. For some people it will not sound like it's, it's uh, much, but guys, I always say don't forget it, 1%, uh, you, will, you will get 1% if you make a deposit in the bank and that 1% will be your yearly return of investment. And here you will be able to make 1% in a in week, you can, you can even make 1% per day but not constantly from time to time and it's, even if you make 2 or 3% in one or two weeks, it's still, just compare it to the bank, it's still much better than 365 days in the bank only to have 1% up. So think, is really Forex what you want? I think that the answer is very clear. Forex should be available and every single person who have anything in their mind about freedom, about financial freedom should uh, try to trade Forex. So guys, if you have friends, if you have relatives who want to, to teach something, who, who you want to actually trade with you or just bring it here, I am always eager to explain everything because as I say, having even 2 or 3% in month is much better than having 1% on a yearly basis in the bank. So think about it. Uh, Scalp trades are used for building up the account. So they are usually used when account is uh, smaller and you want to build it up. I mean, why would you scalp with, with a high accounts like 50, 60, 70K? I mean, there is no point in scalping. You just need to open a small risk trade, See, put an equity risk and watch your account grow. It will grow slowly but it will grow. So scalp trades usually are made on slower, lower accounts because you know scalping is much more riskier than intraday trading and 
we will not do scalp trades on our live trading. Uh, I might say there could be a possible scalp or not, but uh, we will do actually positional intraweek trading with occasional counter trend and breakout trading. So I always say it depends on your account. If you have different accounts, like, let's say higher accounts, lower accounts, then you can mix, mix these strategies. Breakout trades usually use two trades per day maximum. It's 0.5 to 1% risk per trade, usually 2% maximum risk per day. It's session dependent, and if positional trades is, trade is missed, then breakout trade can be your trade for the day. But don't risk more than 2% per day. Counter trend trades use equity stop, not technical stop, not uh, anything except for equity stop. We can make maximum two trades per day. 0.5 and 1% should be the risk. 2% per day is the maximum risk for counter trend trades. And we usually make counter trend trades when positional or scalp trade has been missed out. That is the time when we make counter trend trades. Now, general rules for money management. Before we move on to live charts, I want to give you a couple of more slides to show you. So, most trader, traders use profit stops. So, we also will be using profit stops. And when I say most traders, I don't think about retail traders. And I'm not referring to retail traders. Because, guys, I am teaching you and I've been teaching you how to trade like, the, like a bank. Banks always use profit stops. So, that is how we will use it and how you should also use it. Profit stops. Okay. Now, profit protection is always applied to trades that are in a good profit or let's say in a profit that is going nowhere. So if your trade is like 20, 25 pips and you see that it's not going anywhere, just move your stop loss to plus 20 and enjoy a free ride or scale out and enjoy a free ride because you will be putting the rest to break even. So that is how I do it and how you should do it. Swings are always profit protected because if you want to make a swing trade, move your stop loss as the swing progresses in your favor. You can turn scalp into scalp swing just by moving a stop loss further away in profit so you can make a scalp into scalp swing and it's account dependent so it really means that uh, if you trade a lower account it will be different money management than if you were trading uh, an already built up account so which are those account types so those are low to high accounts so those are lower accounts that you want to build up to become high or whole account. Whole account is the account that you have initially made a deposit with. So let's say that you made a deposit of 30,000 euros. Usually that is your savings, right? So that is the whole account. So we think usually that you don't need to add anything and, and you want to trade that account and actually withdraw the profits because you want to, you want to actually uh, make uh, something out of your life, you want to buy a, a car, maybe you want to buy, uh, I know some people, of course, with trading higher accounts can buy a house, you can buy some smaller things, but the point is if you trade whole account, then you want actually to not to deposit anymore. So that is the account, and now let's see what we can do from that account. Investment account, that is different. If you want to use uh, your account as a potential investment, like uh, savings for retirement, then totally different money management strategy, totally different with risk of 0.1% per trade. 
that is when you want if you want to make a retirement account so let's say that you have uh, 10,000 euros and you want to you want to make a retirement uh, so it means like trading next 10 or 20 years so your trade should be very very small one 0.1 percent per risk 0.1 uh, percent per trade compounding account another different guys type of account compounding a compounding account is the account that uses compounding rules I've already did an example and you have it in in, in uh, zero to hero project guys so uh, yes just I will use this occasion now actually to show you something so for all of you who are watching this webinar and who are uh, actually new to trading uh, please go to zero to hero because that is uh, something that we did for new traders and actually it has a system that is only reserved for traders who actually uh, register here uh, so zero to hero project that you can learn to trade in 21 days so this is for traders who actually are watching this on YouTube or who are watching me live now and uh, they're beginners so this is guys what you should be focused on this is a great I we have included a great system to trade on four hour time frame that is profitable and uh, you should be because it has price action principles but it's actually a system so only for traders who register here so please go there register and you will be surprised positively uh, so uh, let's get back to our webinar so investment account is as I said different than compounding compounding account is you need to use uh, compounding the rules I included also compounding spread spreadsheet within a zero to hero project so it's good thing but you need to be very very strict with yourself and you should not withdraw any money because compounding ca accounts are different than uh, low to high or whole accounts or investment accounts you can also use Compounding tactics on investment account, but with smaller risk, of course, with 0.1 risk. An institutional account, that is the final form of the account, and uh, it, it actually, well, actually, guys, uh, traders who trade with uh, at least 100,000 euros, dollars, units, they don't need to have leverage, right? So trading on institutional account is different than all of these other accounts now for uh, there is a tool that I will show you now and actually you will see that uh, mini terminal that is provided by Admiral Markets uh, Supreme Edition uh, has one uh, very very good option that is hidden within this yellow circle and that means you can do whatever you want with your account as far as money management is concerned that I have been explaining so everything is covered within this simple, simple tool called Admiral Markets mini terminal let me show you a real chart and then I will show you just I will use example and show you how it looks how it looks guys just give me a few seconds okay I need to open live chart okay let's see for example for example you want to trade euro dollar to the short side okay so you want to trade euro dollar and you use let's say one hour time frame so if you use technical stop then obviously you will place it above most obvious swing high that is this one right so you will place your technical stop somewhere around there right now if you want to use uh, something different then open mini terminal like this and click this one so you see guys this is the core of money management trading do you want to buy or sell let's say we will sell it you can trade with fixed loss sides so let's say that you know what is your risk let's say you trade ten thousand dollar account and uh, well here you will always use the same stop loss let's say that for euro dollar you will you always use 35 pips 
And if you know what your stop loss is, you can go with fixed lot size. Because let's say that 35 pips with 0 0.50 lot on $10,000 account is very low risk, right? So you can do it like that. Or maybe you can have stop loss different, like fixed price, fixed cash, cash risk, percent of equity, percent of balance. So let's say that on this account, okay, we actually want to trade with fixed equity percentage, okay? We just say place an order and here we go. Okay, here we go, guys. We already have set our trade automatically. 0 0.15 is our fixed top, 1% of equity and fixed target. But you can move, guys, this however you wish. You can move your stop loss once you're in profit. You can do with your trade whatever you want. So this is a good way to control your risk. It's a really, really go, good way to control the risk. Because here you can also use for another trade percent, percent, uh, fixed percentage of balance. You can use fixed price, fixed cash risk. For example, if your risk is, let's say, $100, just place it like this. Fist, you can experiment. Fixed lot size, percent of the equity, percent of balance. You see here with percentage of equity, it says calculate the lot size based on a fixed stop loss. Okay? So you can do, guys, whatever you want. This is the great tool for you to use. And by doing that, you should be able to trade successfully in the long run. So use mini terminal because other than mini terminal, we have a script. I'm not sure that I have it here, but it's actually uh, it's actually different. It, it 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 was not made by Admiral Market. So you see, you can also place like one percent of risk with 30% of stop with 30% uh, of stop loss when you press ok it will tell you uh, calculate the lot size per the, per account spread whatever but this is more advanced tool because when you click here you can do whatever you want and as i say i want to use combination of technical stop and equity stop so if you have any questions do not hesitate to ask me. So we have covered uh, this lesson now. So we are moving on with our price section training school. And I think starting from uh, maybe December or New Year, we will have uh, Wednesday live trading sessions. Uh, one question I have uh, here. Scalp swings, which time frame is good? Well, for scalp swings, we usually use 15 minute time frame but you can also use scalp and turn it into a scalp swing so let's say that this trade was done on five minute time frame and if we go in a profit we just need to move our stop loss here to be in profit and that way we are actually securing uh, so-called profit stop and making our trade uh, scalp swing but scalp swing is never ever less than 12 pips so at least 12 pips when you need to, at least you need to have 12 pips of a profit if you want to make a scalp trade into a scalp swing. Uh, so I, su I assume that everything is clear. I don't see any questions. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed webinar, guys. Uh, try to follow this, what I'm, what I'm telling you, because ultimately, guys, you will see that... Uh, your uh, uh, account depends on you guys, not of, just on your system. It depends on you and your money management. By using this tool here, you have the ability to manage your account the way how I have been teaching you. Okay? For any questions, here is the question, how can I contact you? For any questions or if anything is not clear, guys, just send an email to me. I say I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to help you. And uh, I'm always at your disposal, guys. So 
any question, if anything is not clear or you need an explanation, additional